डांगे सर विशेष विशेषज्ञ संरक्षण कृषि विज्ञान केन्द्र बदनापुर संवाद साधना है सर थोड़क परिचय मी कर सर सर आचार्य पदवी जी है पीक संरक्षण एंटोमोलॉजी विषया मध्य पूर्ण के लिए दोन हजार एक पास सर विषय विशेषज्ञ या पदा वरती कृषि विज्ञान केन्द्र बदनापुर कार्यरत है सर कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर खरपुड़ी एथे देखी प्राध्यापक या पदा वरती काम के सर एक्सटेन्शन मधल काम पहाता पीक संरक्षण या विषया वरती सर आतापर्यत विविध घड़ीपत्रिक प्रकाशन देखी के लिए सोबत तालुका स्तरीय कमिटी के सर सदस्य रह पीक संरक्षण या विषया मध्य सर विविध प्रशिक्षण देखी घेन्द्रीय बोंडी फॉल आर्मी वम अल या विविध विषय मध्य सर हथकंड है सोबत सेरिकल्चर मे रेशीम उद्योग देखी सर हथकंड है देखी सर चांगल मार्गदर्शन करता मार्गदर्शन कर सर आज का विषय है रोल इन बायोपेस्टिड इन ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग डॉक्टर सचिन धानगे सर सब्जेक्ट मैटर स्पेशलिस्ट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्लांट प्रोटेक्शन कृषि विज्ञान केन्द्र बदनापुर जालना दोन नमस्कार सर हाँ नमस्कार मैडम आवाज ये तो मैडम सर यू आर क्लियरली ऑडिबल एंड योर पीपीटीज आर विजुअल सो यू कैन स्टार्ट योर सेशन ओके ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू मैडम ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ टेन डेज ऑनलाइन ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग ट्रेनिंग आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स फॉर दिस सेशन वी आर है our honorable program coordinator dr s d somun ji sir with us i also welcome dr s d somun ji sir and my all dear colleague on this occasion so my topic is role of bio pesticide in organic farming first of all i would like to say the bio pesticide role and the chemical pesticide role means our crop production is present day totally depend on chemical pesticide or chemical inputs but the need of present situation is we have to minimize the chemical means in pesticide in fertilizer or in other areas so that we can protect the our environment so first of all we will see the pest we know you you all are the agriculture graduate so you all know the role of uh, the role of insect in agriculture insect can play both role means insect uh, related with the agriculture production in both way some insects are harmful and some insects are beneficial but today we are dealing with the harmful insect so how can they cause damage to the crop first we will see how the important insect can cause damage to our crop mainly there are three ways in three ways insect pest today we will de deal with specially insect pest only 
in pest category you all know pest is a very broad category in pest category we can say insect harmful insect harmful weeds pathogens these all component comes under the pest category but today we are dealing with the insect pest only so the insect pest can cause damage to plant or our agriculture production in three ways means there are three roughly there are three types of insect or the uh, there are three modes of infestation or attack out of this three mode first type of insect this is not the scientific uh, classification but roughly on the basis of their mode of action or their nature of damage we categorized these all insect harmful insect in three category first group of insect targets the crop directly by cutting the roots or um, directly by feeding on the leaves stem or different solid plant parts those insect having chewing and biting type of mouth parts they can directly cut the solid parts of the plant and they can harm plant directly damaging their solid parts this is first category of insect pest and the second category includes the all sucking pest in sucking pest these uh, sucking pest insect cause the damage by sucking the cell sap means all insect possesses this sucking and piercing type of mouth part some of them also has rasping and sucking type of mouth parts so this group this group suck the cell sap from different plant parts and mostly from leaf and because of this plant uh, shows the yellowing symptoms mainly and later on it dries up and finally affect the yield and productivity and the third category of insect that is they sometimes even bore into the stem and fruit of the plant so if you see the example of this three group in first group you can put a leaf eating caterpillar in this first group in second group you know all the sucking pests today means after the introduction of bt uh, the role of sucking pest or the uh, damage of sucking pest increased by many times is before the introduction of bt the major pest of especially in cotton major pest of cotton were leaf uh, bollworms but after the introduction sucking pest became a major and not only in cotton now in current situation in all the crops the sucking pest creating a serious threat by sucking the cell sap most of uh, in sucking pest first of all aphid then jasid then thrips then white fly mealybug scale insect these all sucking pest causing a very serious threat in crop production and the last category is borer stem borer or fruit borer in this uh, the very uh, common example that is fruit borer you can see in anar you can see in uh, other fruit crop also and especially in maratwada or in jalna district the sugarcane area is more so in sugarcane also there is com uh, component of uh sugar cane borer so these three types of category pest cause the damage to crop okay now in currently we are totally depend on the chemical pesticide the farmers uh, mentality is to use the chemical pesticide to control the pest because the effect or the effectivity of this chemical pesticide is very high if you consider the bio pesticide or other means they are effective but the as compared to chemical pesticide their effectiveness is somewhat minimum or somewhat less that's why farmers mentality is to use the chemical pesticide and 
one of the main threat in the adoption of bio pesticide is the availability most of the bio uh, bio pesticide are not easily available to farmers as compared to chemical pesticide if you ask chemical pesticide for any seller you will get it very immediately but this is not the situation in case of bio pesticide so these two important things makes chemical pesticide is the only option for plant protection but the hazardous effects of chemical pesticide we are talking from last 5 6 days we are talking on the organic farming so why organic farming is important is why should not we means we continue this chemical use of chemical fertilizer chemical pesticide and other chemical means for agriculture crop production so the major effect of this chemical say in agriculture especially in chemical pesticide there hazardous effect of chemical pesticide exposure to various pesticide can cause short term health problem as well as long term diseases we all know if you spray the pesticide or insecticide on crop their residues remain on the crop is chemical residues especially in vegetables and fruits you may know in grape or in pomegranate daily spraying is needed if you want to get a higher profit from this horticultural crop or vegetable vegetable crops you need to spray chemical pesticide daily and if you observe especially in vegetable farmer used to spray on vegetables in morning session and they put their vegetables or their products for sale in market in afternoon means within 2 to 3 hours gap we are eating chemical pesticide means all pesticide if you use in proper manner they are not harmful but if the farmers avoid the norms that is waiting period if you spray any chemical specific waiting period is for, there for that chemical suppose 10 days waiting period if you spray any chemical and the waiting period of that chemical is 10 days then we should not sell or we should not eat or we should not use that product within that 10 days after the completion of waiting period we can use so but in today's situation no one is serious about this all the norms that's why we are eating specially means Uh, this uh, infected or this uh, contaminated or residues uh, uh, chemical residues so day by day our body is getting chemicals means harmful chemicals within us and we are storing in our tissues or fat and that's why we are causing a serious health problem if you see the example of punjab state you all know the most cancer patient are from punjab and one uh, special uh, train also there that is from punjab to ahmedabad in gujarat so that train is named as a cancer train because most of the cancer patient use that train to come to uh, ahmedabad for treatment so in punjab the most important region or the main important region be behind this tragedy is the indiscriminate use of chemicals in agriculture there are many reason behind this cancer or may, this chronic diseases but the most important reason behind this situation that is the indiscriminate use of this chemicals in agriculture production so likewise this chemical residue or use of indiscriminate use of chemical creating serious threat in human health problem not only in human health human health problem these chemicals are harmful because they are disturbing or they are polluting environment pesticide 
can contaminate soil water and other vegetation also and they are creating serious health problem like cancer asthma diabetes and growth disorders in children also so uh points in mind we have to terminate means our practices from chemicals to minimum chemical because we cannot stop using pesticide we cannot use only by pesticide because you you all know the growing population increasing population in india i think we are 150 crore plus maybe and this is still growing up so if you want to provide a nutritious food to all these hungry people or all these this increasing population if you want to make up the need of food we have to increase the pesticide we have to use the pesticide by using by pesticide we cannot produce that much food but you may ask then what we should do means if you cannot use the chemical pesticide and bio pesticide cannot produce that much food so what is the middle way so the middle way is we have to lower down the use of pesticide chemical pesticide and we should increase the use of bio pesticide means use both this option not only bio pesticide and not only chemical pesticide by taking these two options in practices we can protect the environment we can protect our health and we can produce the required quantity of food or required quantity of agriculture production so this is the middle way we should use chemical pesticide wherever needed means if there is a pest we cannot control with this option first we start the using the other option uh, means other option means other than chemical pesticide and if this all option fail to protect the crop in that situation in that case only we can go with the chemical pesticide but before that we must try all these options so the major bio pesticide used in organic farming there are many bio pesticide but practically the mostly used and most popular and most effective bio pesticide are the first one is nske that is neem seed kernel extract the second one is nuclear polyhydrosis virus the third one bacterium that is bacillus thuringiensis next one is this last three these are the entomopathogenic fungi metarism anastomosis then lecanicillum lecani before is known uh, as verticillium lecani and the last one is bifuria bacena besides these all bio pesticide many bio pesticide are in use are in trial but these six component are very effective and practically being practiced by farmer in current situation okay so the first one pesticide that is nsk neem seed kernel extract this is very effective pesticide and we can prepare it in or on our own farm because the component required for this uh, or the material required for this nsk is uh, uh, easily available on our farm and if you see the cost of production means the uh, in mar uh, market price of this nsk if you want to uh, purchase the 1 liter of nsk from market you will get it uh, around 700 to 800 rupees per liter but if you try to produce it on, on your own farm you will get it around uh, 100 to 150 rupees per liter means 
this much small production or uh, production cost of this nsk and the procedure is also very simple means there is no too much advanced technology is there nothing scientific uh, is there very simple technology by using that simple technology you can prepare this nsk first we will see the how to prepare the nsk and next we will discuss uh, the important of nsk and why how the nsk control different type of paste in this preparation methodology first we need to take 5 kg this 5 kg of neem seed the dried neem seed and after taking the second stage is grind the kernels gently to powder it means crush the kernel in grinder and make powder then take that 5 kg powder tie in one cotton cloth and soak it overnight in 10 liter of water or the second option is you can directly soak that crush powder in 10 liter of water and or we can tie this all we can put all this 5 kg uh, dried powder in cloth and you can put that cloth in just uh, 10 liter wa- water overnight and then after 12 hours simply take that cotton cloth out of the water or if you put all the crushed powder directly in the water then filter this water through double layer of muslin cloth and make the final volume of 100 liter means add another 19 liter of water in that 10 liter you will get final product as a 5% nsk so this much simple procedure of this nsk preparation and as a agricultural graduate at least we should try uh, this nsk product or preparation of nsk at our own farm and we sh- must promote the farmers to use this pesticide because it is very uh, effective pesticide and we can prepare it on uh, low cost okay so pest control by this nsk beetle ralvi butterfly moth caterpillar stock borer true bugs plant leaf hoppers adult beetle thrips fruit flies kill insect mini bugs and more we can control by this using nsk if you see any pesticide this pesticide works on one principle like nervous poison or anti oppositional activity anti filling activity deterrent or repellent like this many groups there in uh, chemicals means chemical pesticide on that activity some chemical act as a anti filling some chemical act as a anti oppositional acti- uh, component some uh, chemical act as a repellent but this nsk if you see the mode of action of nsk it works in complex means there are three different working principle first principle of this nsk is repel is avoid the feeding of uh, insect or any pest if you spray nsk on plant this sprayed plant means the spray uh, field that sprayed field generally not preferred by insect insect does not prefer the sprayed plant or the nsk treated plant that is first uh, benefit means it act as anti feeder second one insect avoid oe position in such field means insect cannot lay eggs on plant treated with nsk that is second option means first anti feeder then anti oe positional and the third one is if we use the uh, nsk directly on insect pest it affects the um, growth means the uh, 
their physiology of growth generally most of the insect shed their skin while the development process that is known as molting and the shedding of screen is one of the physiological process or physiological uh, task of their development so this nsk targets this cuticle shedding or molting it avoids the or it break up the this physiological process are responsible for the cuticle shedding so in this way this nsk targets the pest and kill the pest in three ways anti oviposition anti fildan and it affects the development physiological development of uh, insect pest and there is no single side effect or disadvantage of this chemical yes, if you take any example any biopest other biopesticide or any chemical pesticide there are some uh, hazardous effect some negative points there but this is the one of the novel chemical or novel biopesticide so we can we miss we should trigger the use of this nsk then second here you can see the neem seed kernel then crushed neem seed kernel and the final product of nsk prepared in red color bucket and how uh, we should use means the doses of nsk in this five if you pre prepare 5% nsk then we must use at least 5 ml per 10 liter or directly make up the volume of 100 liter and directly spray on the infected area or crop okay but if you go in the market uh, to um, purchase the nsk product you will get 2 uh, 3 concentration means 100 uh, 500 uh, 1500 ppm and 10000 ppm if you get 1500 ppm nsk then we must use 5 ml per liter okay and the second component that is 10000 ppm if you get 10000 ppm nsk then we should use 1 ml per liter means for 15 ml tank 15 liter tank we should use 50 ml and if you go with 1500 ml uh, ppm then we should use 5 ml nsk for 1 liter of water okay so we can control the pest effectively but in case of 10000 ppm nsk if you use concentration more than 1 ml suppose 3 ml or 4 ml you will get side effects means phytotoxicity you can notice phytotoxicity or you will get phytotoxic effect on your crop so while using 10000 ppm nsk you must follow the dose that is 1 ml per liter okay then the next chemical that is biopesticide that is nuclear polyhydrosis virus there are many viruses we can use in pest management but one of the most and popularly proven virus that is hanpv nuclear polyhydrosis virus helicorpa armigera nuclear polyhydrosis virus the nuclear polyhydrosis virus is part of the family of baculoviruses and is very effective against all the insects and mostly the moths and butterflies are controlled or targeted by this virus and the symptoms of npv infection includes the discoloration then brown and yellow discoloration then stress then decomposition and leathery that is slow movement to no movement at all okay the practically used virus that is helicorpa armigera nuclear polyhydrosis virus 
Hillcore power measure is one of the most important pests because it is a polyphagous. Some pests are monophagous, some pests are oligophagous, some pests are polyphagous. It is very uh, difficult to control the polyphagous pest. If you consider the monophagous pest, we can eradicate the host and we can control the monophagous pest because monophagous pest is uh, totally depend on a single host for their development and their growth. And if you eradicate that single host, we can easily control the that monophagous pest. Simply by crop rotation, we can control the monophagous pest. But that is not the condition of polyphagous pest. We if you replace one crop, that polyphagous pest can grow or can feed on other host plant. And this bollworm, especially Helicorpa majora, can use or can feed nearly 20 to 22 crop grown under our condition, Indian condition or in Maratoda region. So, the crop rotation option is somewhat less effective against this HR majora. The second option, chemical pesticide. We already discussed the disadvantage of chemical pesticide. So one of the most effective way to control this bollworm or specially uh, polyphagous helicorpa armigera, that is helicorpa armigera nuclear polyhydrosis virus. It is very effective and it is uh, environmentally eco-friendly. And the most important point which makes this HANPV uh, very effective, that is mortality of this infect uh, mortality of 100 percent means if you treat 100 larvae with hnpv you will get 100 percent mortality means you can kill the 100 larvae at all so this is the very biggest plus point of this hnpv the mode of action is the virus enter the nucleus of infected cell and reproduce until the cell begins to produce crystal in the fluid of the host. This crystal can transmit the virus from one host to another and the host become visibly swollen with fluid containing the virus and eventually dies turning black with decay. Okay. And here you can see the symptoms of symptoms of infected larvae. That is treat of disease. Blackish larvae hanging from crop. So this type of symptoms you can notice in HANPV infected larvae. Now the next important biopesticide that is Bacillus thuringiensis. I think in 2002. Uh, our country firstly introduced this biopesticide in cotton crop and there onwards this PT proved very effective up to 2014 or 15 but after that this uh, pink bowl worm uh, created the resistance or big uh, broken this technology by creating uh, resistance uh, resistance power in, in this bollworm complex. So, if you discuss about the Bacillus thuringiensis, a Bt is a species of bacteria that lives in soil. It makes proteins that are toxic to some insect when eaten, but not others. This is the most important point. This. Bacillus thuringiensis pesticide means it produces the simply this Bt produces the toxin, endotoxin. But this, if you means if insect eat the Bt component or Bt plant, that Bt Bacillus thuringiensis enters into the insect gut, and after entering into the insect gut, it produces this endotoxin. 
and that endotoxin that get activated by some enzymes and to lethal to bull worms or some insect but this bt toxin if you eat or by mistake this bt uh, toxin gets entry into the human stomach or mammal stomach it is observed that it cannot produce the toxin it cannot prove the uh, lethal to mammals or human because the enzymes required to activate the toxin not present in mammals or human it, it depends on the ph of gut and other physiological factors but here we must keep in mind this bt is not harmful to human still now okay only harmful to specific insect so we can consider this bt as a specific insecticide okay and this bt is widely used in agriculture for the control of insect pests if you take the example of india we control or we manage bollworm in last 10 or 15 years only by using the bacillus thuringiensis and uh, now today we are having some critical situation regarding pink bollworm only but remaining other bollworm controlled by this bt predominantly only one side effect we notice in some um, last some years that is after the introduction of bt the secondary pest becomes the major pest before uh, especially in cotton before the introduction of bt the bollworms were the most dangerous or most severe threat in cotton production but after the introduction of bt this bollworm managed by bt but the secondary pest those were not economically important such as aphids acid thrips and other sucking pests became the serious threat now they can cause 100% loss in cotton crop it may be because of uh, higher use of fertilizer and many uh, natu- uh, other reason but the after the introduction of bt in last some year the sucking pest became the major problem now bt e protein has been used in many organic farms for over 15 years as a microbial pest control agent bt proteins are allowed in organic farming as a insecticide because bt is a natural non pathogenic bacterium that is found naturally in the soil natural and non pathogenic and it is widely used in agriculture for the control of insect pests here you can see the mode of action of bt after the ingestion in human uh, insect body first is enter into the insect gut then uh, this bt toxin reproduce and from the crystal and then it uh, it breaks the gut and uh, <coughs> uh, transfer or it disseminate in whole body and then finally cause the death of insect now the next important biopest is that is metarhizae manuscript we discuss first of all nsk the second one that is hnpv and third one that is bt hnpv that is a virus bt is a bacterium nsk is a natural extract or natural product the main compound of nsk that is as a directing and the remaining three majorly used biopesticide are metarhizae manuscript verticillium lecani and the bivaria bassiana this all these three are known as entomopathogenic fungi if you keep fungi word in mind you will get the fungal pathogen in your mind okay means all are the harmful for crop production but some of the fungi are very effective in pest management and beneficial for farming community and in this group these three playing a important role metarhizae manuscript verticillium lecani and bivaria bassiana metarhizae manuscript is fungus grows upon insect cuticle 
you know the insect cuticle is very tough to break it is made up of means the, this insect cuticle is uh made up of cutic uh, chitin chitin protein and that is very difficult to break most of the insect cell fail to control insect only because of they cannot penetrate the cuticle and if you want to kill the insect we must penetrate the chemical or penetrate the that pesticide into the insect body and that is the main task penetration and because of tough cuticle tough body cover and up of chitin it is very uh, difficult to break it but the metarhizae manusplies fungi when it get means it this fungi can produce the uh, required enzyme which can degrade the chitin we can degrade the pro main protein in insect cuticle and easily penetrate the insect cuticle and get entry into the uh, insect body or insect gut that's why this metarhizae manusplies were very effective and if you see the role of if you notice or if you observe the role of metarhizae manusplies in insect pest management it is important in the management of white grub you know white grub it is a polyphagous pest specially uh, harmful for sugar cane and fruit crop and uh the feeding habit of white grub is it is a completely soil covered pest means if you see the growth or the life cycle of white grub white grub adult deposit the eggs uh in soil from that eggs larva or caterpillar hatches and after hatching that grub Uh, remain inside the soil around the root zone of plant and keep feeding on the uh, plant roots means most of uh, the life stages at uh, eggs grub and pupa this all three stages remain inside the soil that's why this pest is very difficult to control once you uh, once the the target or once they infect or once they raise their population in one any, any field it is very difficult to control them so that if you, uh, we cannot means we cannot spray the insect side because they are under soil cover we cannot collect them we cannot destroy them in standing crop by other uh, tillage operations so only one way to control them effective way this is the metarhizae manusplies if you apply this metarhizae manusplies by broadcasting or by uh, fertigation uh, by drip or by spraying also this metarhizae manusplies can multiply multiply in soil and can target this uh, metarhizae uh, uh, white grub so this is the one of the most effective pesticide by pesticide to combat the uh, this a white grub problem and the in practically we need to use at least 50 to 60 g uh, this metarhizae manusplies powder in 10 liter of water for drenching purpose so this is the most important uh, by pesticide against uh, white grub here you can see the infected white grub uh, larvae by metarhizae manusplies now the second last important by pesticide that is lecanicillin lecani before it is also known uh, where it was <coughs> named as verticillin lecani and this uh, lecanicillin lecani act as a by pesticide against most of the second pest especially aphid white fly and thrips at last you can see the nymph a bug infected by verticillium lecani this hyper totally uh, penetrated into the 
insect body here you can notice the hypa infected with this entomopathogenic fungi and the most important thing regarding this lecanicerum lecani or other entomopathogenic fungi here uh, the place where we uh, we cannot apply chemical pesticide we can uh, or difficult to apply for example sugar cane field or some other field here we cannot enter the crop or we cannot uh, do the other spring um, do the spraying operation while uh, means uh, by entering into the crop field so in this case if you spray this bio pesticide especially in entomopathogenic fungi around the burns around the boundary of that uh, field in that situation also they can protect the field by avoiding the entry of other sucking pest no need to spray the total field or in case of sugar cane it is also means it is impossible also so in that situation if you spray the chemical pesticide around the field it cannot protect the whole field it cannot uh, multiply or it cannot reach uh, inside the field but in case of entomopathogenic fungi the most important thing is if you spray this entomopathogenic fungi around the field they can protect whole field by avoiding the entry or if you if them means if the that entomopathogenic fungi gets a favorable condition they can multiply themselves in that field and they can protect whole field so this is the most important point regarding this uh, bio pesticide okay and the last pesticide that is uh, today we are going to deal with that is bivaria bassiana bivaria bassiana is fungus naturally grown in soil and especially uh, effective against many arthropod it causes wide muscadine disease in uh, insect and especially it targets the aphid thrips and white fly so this verticillium lecani and bivaria bassiana uh, both the uh, insect use uh, both the fungi useful regard uh, against the this uh, entomopathogenic fungi uh, sorry in, uh, this insect means uh, insect pest so this is all about the mostly useful by pesticide in agriculture field in current situation there are many by pesticide many effective uh, by pesticide but in our area mostly used by pesticide are nske HNPV, BT, Metarhizium, then Verticillium lecali and Bivaria bassiana. These five six product proven very effective, and these uh, these pesticides are easily available as compared to other pesticides. And beside these all bio pesticides, some bio fungicides also there, some bio weedicides also there. But today we wanted to deal with bio pesticide specially targets the insect pest so these are the five six important um, bio pesticides so at the end of my lecture i would like to request all you means you are working in agriculture field you most of the student agriculture students generally from uh, agriculture background from farming community so at least you should increase the use of bio pesticide in your own field okay and if possible we can advise our neighbors or other farmers or our relatives or friends to use this bio pesticide by telling them the disadvantage of chemical pesticide on our health okay so this is all about the use of bio pesticide in organic farming uh hello madam chaudhary sir sir uh, thank you thank you so much uh, okay, for okay, madam i am done with my lecture now you can continue okay thank you thank you so much sir uh, with very informative session is there if any query uh, any question regarding the session 
uh, you can ask your question dire directly by unmuting yourself otherwise you can put your question in a chat box otherwise you raise your hand jar tumhala kahi shanka astil kahi prashna astil by pesticide preparation baddal tar tumhi tumse prashna chat box madhe type kara anyatha tumhi raise hand ya parayacha vapar dekhil karu shakta sar tumhala tumcha प्रश्न नहीं है का प्रश्न नहीं अर्थ तुम्हारा सर्व समझता है रमेश मोगल मैडम रमेश मोगल हैंड रेज के अनम्यूट करा ठीक है प्लीज सोरे सर हेलो हाँ बोला हाँ सर नमस्कार सर मला मेटाराइजिम विषय जाम व्हाइट ग्रब आड़ता ज्यादा शेक व्यवस्थित कंपोस्टिंग हो तिथुन बरचा प्रमाण व्हाइट ग्रब अपने शेतापर्यत पोचता फार्म यार्ड मैन्युअर मध्य या व्हाइट ग्रब च जीवन क्रम जो आहे एक दोन आली कि अंडी घी कंट्रोल करना कसापर करता सर मेटाराइजिंग तुम्हें आज जे संगित कि पन्ना से साठ ग्रैम दा लीटर पानी जे अपने वपरू शको फॉलिअर फ्रे सात कि ड्रेंचिंग संगित अजे दोन क्वेश्चन होते सर ओके ओके तुम जो पेला प्रश्न है कि ऑब्जर्वेशन है बरबर है कि बयाच वे जे का हुमनी आड़ी का प्रादुर्भाव अपने जमीनी मध्य हो तो अपने जे कहीं शेनखत है तो न कुजले शेनखत अपन ज्यास टाकतो व्यवस्थित न कुजले तो हुमनी आड़ी अंडे कि ग्रह आने की शक्यता खूब दाट आती हुमनी आड़ी का प्रादुर्भाव अपने शेनखत तो शता मधे हो एक तर सर्वात पहला उपाय मे व्यवस्थित कुजले शेनखत वैच जे जो पन्ना टे कुजले नवीन शेनखत जास्त हुमनी आड़ी का प्रादुर्भाव कि हुमनी आड़ी की शक्यता एकदम कुजले कमी दुसरी गोष्ट कि जर आप शेनखता मधे ही जर हुमनी मेटाराइजियम पाउडर मिक्स कर टाकल तरी आप हुमनी आड़ी नाइन आट करता तो, नंतर मग अपन शेता मध्य शको ज्यास अपने शेत टाका पूर्वी एक वे साइड का व्यवस्थित मेटाराइजम च पाउडर मिक्स करता वे फिर एक कि ज्यास अपन मेटाराइजम पाउडर टाकू तो थोड़ी पानी कि मॉइस्चर आण गरजे जेनेकर मेटाराइजम की खता मे हो जे का व्हाइट ग्रब ऐसी लारवी आल एकदा का इन्फेक्शन एकदा का पैथोजन टच मध्य जर ग्रब आली शंबर टक्के इन्फेक्शन होंट्रोल मिलते दुसरा जो पन्ना साठ एम एल ग्राम जो संगित ड्रेंचिंग शक्य तो वैसे कारण मेटाराइजियम मोस्टली अपन वो व्हाइट ग्रब ऐसी कंट्रोल सा बाकी दुसर प्लेस मेटाराइजियम वरत नहीं व्हाइट ग्रब च जे का इन्फेक्शन जे का प्रादुर्भाव है तो है जमीनी मे रूट जोन मे फॉलिअर स्प्रे कर रिजल्ट मिलना नहीं तो अपने ड्रेंचिंग कर ड्रेंचिंग जर के चांगला रिजल्ट है आता जर ड्रेंचिंग शक्य न से बयाच फील्ड मे जो ड्रीप आल तो तीन से चार किलो एक जर ड्रीप मधु सोल तरी अपने चांगल पैकी व्हाइट ग्रब ची कंट्रोल मिले सोडने का कालावधि आपफ जी है व्हाइट ग्रब ची जून मे सुरू होते जून मॉन्सून फर्स्ट मॉन्सून सुरू जाए नर एक डिपोजिशन होता न हलूह मार जून जुलाई ऑगस्ट सप्टेंबर मध्य फूल ग्रोन लार्वा ऑक्टोबर एंड पर्यत डिसेंबर जानेवारी पर प्रिपेसन हो डायपॉस स्टेज होते सुरू तो जो एक्टिव पीरियड जो है तो ऑगस्ट पास डिसेंबर पर्यत है तो सुरुआती जर आप तो लार्वा फर्स्ट इंस्टार सेकंड थर्ड सेकंड इंस्टार मे अल जर आप शेता मे वाल नक्की कंट्रोल मिलते दुसरी गोष्टाइजियम व्हाइट ग्रब मे कि रिप्रोडक्शन 
जे फर्स्ट मान्सून पडल्यानंतर होत होतं ते तुमच्या बाबूलच झाड असेल किंवा लिंबाच असेल तर त्यावर होत होत त्या झाडाखाली लाईट रॅप लावला तरी ते कंट्रोल आपल्याला करता येतात किंवा ते झाडावर स्प्रिंग घेतली तरी आपल्याला ते कंट्रोल करता येतात धन्यवाद सर यानंतर सोळंक प्रश्न विचारू शकता तुम्ही त्यानंतर वाढला ट्रेनिंग आय डी सिक्स्टी फाईव्ह चुकून अनम्यूट झालेत का आय थिंक सो ओके कोणाचे काही प्रश्न असतील तर कृपया तुम्ही स्वतःला अनम्यूट करून सरांना प्रश्न विचारू शकता बीटी रोल BT means Bacillus thuringiensis is very simple na BT incorporated crop that is BT cotton or non BT means uh, without BT gene Thank you sir any other question you can put your question in the chat box otherwise unmute yourself we can choose the option raise hand also to ask the question sir uh, one question is again that question repeated what is the basic difference between bt cotton and non bt cotton bt simply the bt cotton it is a transgenic crop means that bt bacillus thuringiensis bacteria is incorporated in cotton and non bt means without that uh, bt gene means i am not getting the exact questions non bt and bt that is very simple one i think hello any other questions ha i didn't get what they want what Please type of explanation ask the question properly so you got your answer bt and non bt role of bt non bt bt आय थिंक सो त्यांना मिनिंग हवं असेल तर सरांनी आपल्याला ऑलरेडी सांगितलं आहे वेन हेलिकॉम हेलिकॉपा झिअ अटॅक्स कॉटन दॅट दॅट इज द इंजिनियर टू प्रोड्यूस द इन्सेक्टिसाइडल टॉक्सिन कॉमनली कॉल्ड एज बीटी ओके अँड फ्रेंड्स ऑफ पेट नॉन बीटी कॉटन इज अ राईट और टार्गेटेड और डेमेज प्लांट्स वी कॅन से without bt genes means non bt simply yeah right right sir exactly uh, if you incorporate bacillus thuringiensis in cotton crop or any other crop the... now Ex- exactly uh, barobar a cotton genetically modified to certain gene that is cry 1 ac that is bacillus thuringiensis that is a bt uh, which is the foreign uh, to to certain genome it is naturally occur in soil bacterium used to control uh, especially lepidopterin insect uh, because mm. of the toxin it produced so it is it is in bt in case of non bt uh, sir already explain uh, that i hope uh, you got your answer yes or no simply it is transgenic plant any other question
if any question now uh, you raise your hand otherwise i will announce the second announcement of our uh, second session friends uh, again you have to join sharp 2.2 pm and the session expert of uh, afternoon session the first expert the name of that expert uh, dr anjuma gayan ma'am assistant professor department of soil science college of sericulture assam agriculture university chorat ethun ma'am aplya sobat samparka sadnar ahet 223 pm and after that dr kt apet sir head of the department plant pathology vasudhar naik maratwada krishi vidyapeet parbani ethun sir aplya sobat samvad sadnar ahet so afternoon session madhe dot 2 clock you have to join the session sharply okay i hope uh, you don't have any questions so sir also put the answer of your question what is bt and non bt in uh, i think in chat i i already i put text yes 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 sir uh, you can check your chat box also okay i hope uh, you understood all the solution of your uh, question and uh, with its few words we will uh, talk this session and again you have to join sharp